All right, we're live. This is the John Moran Solutions A Ask Me Anything. We go live every Monday at 9.30 a.m., even though it's like 9.28. It's a little bit early. <laughs> Thought I'd get a little bit of a jump start. Um, we had our had our 3X Shopify challenge, which was a really a big, big success. I was really happy with it. Uh, I think we were able to help a lot of people, too. And some people are already starting to see um, a 3X return, uh, which has been pretty cool. That's actually something I'm really, really happy about. So. Uh, thank you for everyone that joined that. That was a lot of fun. <clears throat> All right. So this is where we can ask me anything. I can help out with any any sort of questions that you may have. And I am just here for the next, uh, let's see, this goes to 10, 15. So go 45 minutes. Um, yeah. I see some people coming in already. <clears throat> and let's see here. Sure, participants can can chat. All right, there we are. So you should be able to go ahead and chat anything that you would need to. Uh, Shahid, hello. Wanted to say, uh, I wanted just wanted to say you advised me to turn on Target ROAS and Smart Shopping, and I've had great success with this. So thank, yeah, you're very welcome. The uh, Target ROAS on Smart Shopping when you can turn it on in the right area um, or at the right timing, I should say. You'll, you know, Google basically says, okay, rather than just trying to maximize the conversion value, it's going to maximize the conversion value within that, um, within that, that confine that you set up the target row as. Um, normally, uh, hey, Biz, Biz Hike, how are you doing? Uh, normally what you wanted to do with target row is, is at least give it a good amount of time and the longer, the better. That's kind of the general rule is, uh, what's your advice on turning it on and off in terms of scaling it. So a good, uh, a good method for turning on and off target row is, is, um, it's, it really depends on the campaign and what type of success you're, you're receiving already. But a good way to do this is to take a target return on ad spend and whatever that may be leave it on at your daily budget and look at the per day spending and see what you're actually spending per day. You might be, if you're reaching your um, your daily ad spend at the target return ad spend, just increase the daily ad spend and leave the target row as on. If you're not achieving the daily ad spend with the target return ad spend, Make sure your target or make sure your daily ad spend isn't too high. So, I'll give you an example: if you're spending fifty dollars a day and you're only and you're spending fifty with the target ROAS, bump it up to seventy-five and see what happens. If you're trying to spend fifty dollars a day and with the target ROAS, you're only spending thirty-five, go up to you know forty-five or fifty. Um, keep it maybe at fifty if you'd like. Turn the target return on ad spend off, and then leave that go for as long as you can. Um, and try to get it up to the 45 to $50 per day spend. And then as it has some chance to spend that, turn the target return ad spend back on after I would say a month, maybe, a month of having it off, and see if then you are spending your target return ad spend with your, or sorry, spending your daily budget with your target return ad spend. So what you're trying to do is, since it's very, very difficult, nearly impossible, unless you have, unless you have good performance right off the bat when you first turn it on, but with the target return on ad spend, if you're spending, and if you're not reaching that daily budget, it means like, hey, I can't spend up to that daily budget and reach that target return on ad spend. So by turning it off, but not setting your goal like way up here, so all of a sudden it starts spending wild and crazy, and then you have to back it back down. Just set your next level, ten or fifteen dollars higher than what your daily budget is that you're able to achieve with the target return on ad spend on. And when you turn it off, it'll go, whoop, it'll spend that. And then you're going to try to normalize this type of spend. So when you turn it back on, it doesn't dip back down. And the longer you give it, the better it will be. <clears throat> unless you can, unless you can scale, but I, I have been able to scale campaigns. It's not the norm. It probably happens 15, 20% of the time where you can scale a smart shopping campaign with the target row as on. Um, it would be, it'd be difficult to get it to scale with the target return aspect because it's not going to test new items. You need to test those new items. You need to have a lot of impressions and clicks and see if those turn into sales. And if it does, this is, ah, okay, now we can spend the daily budget because we have these items here that are, that are, we've been testing and they're able to be able to produce results. Uh, Bohan, hey, Bohan. Hey, John, from your experience, what would you say the best channel would be for advertising in Amazon agency? 
search for sure. Um, if you're if you're an Amazon agency and you're looking to acquire new customers, which we do market for a couple of Amazon agencies now, um, search is the best, but it is very expensive. But it's expensive for a reason. Make sure that you have very targeted keywords. I would use phrase match and exact match. I would not use the broad match modified strategy. Or sorry, uh, broad match with pure target CPA. Uh, I'm investing on my words. A pure broad with target CPA, it does not work very well for that. Just because there's a massive, massive, massive amount of uh, traffic for Amazon agency-esque type of keywords. So use phrase match and exact match. I would run manual at first and I would bid low, lower than the, the first page bid. I know it sounds weird, <clears throat> but if you, if you use a manual CPC, don't use enhanced CPC on manual, just use manual CPC and look for, you know, Amazon. And then uh, you'd have to do your own kind of keyword research. Uh, I can't share with you the keywords I would go after because it'd be a conflict of interest, but look for, you know, Amazon PPC agency uh, as an example, uh, use phrase and exact match. But if the first page bid is like 18, because it is expensive, we have some clicks going up to 50 and 60. The first page bid is 18, bid 10 in the beginning. There's such, it, it just seems counterintuitive, but there's such a massive influx of traffic that you can actually afford to bid a lot less than first page bid and still get like a 30, 40% search impression share. So start there, uh, but definitely do search. We find that displaying YouTube works really good when you have $20,000 per month ad spends and more, especially on YouTube. YouTube doesn't get a lot of clicks. So with YouTube not getting a lot of clicks, they get a high amount of impressions, high amount of views, but the clicks are low. So 10,000 you know, views for every like 10 clicks. Google needs those clicks to identify what's going on. So when you have 10 clicks and you have 10,000 views and you're like, why isn't this really starting to learn? It only had 10, really 10 clicks. So you have to have a high amount of ad spend uh, we find that spending $10,000 is pretty much normal before you start to see a real influx of conversions. So I would definitely start on search unless you have a fairly large budget. Start with phrase match, exact match. Use manual CPC without enhanced CPC enabled. Bid half of what the first page bid is and just see what type of traffic you're going to get. If you get very little traffic, then start to increase it only about $2 per click per keyword and see where that starts to break into that. That's a way to kind of keep it, uh, keep it low in the beginning. Um, unless you have a good bunch of them bid 40, $50 per click, but, um, testing it, I wouldn't start there. Uh, Sam, this side, oh, Sam, hey Sam, <laughs> I started shopping campaign and dynamic remarketing to feed into the algorithm so that I can use, oh, so that I can then use smart shopping. Got nice click to rate with one and 2.45 respectively, but I have not got sales from these campaigns. Should you use smart shopping campaign will work anyway. <clears throat> yeah. So we've we used to run smart shopping uh or sorry we used to run uh standard shopping dynamic remarketing search you know and then and then leave it go for a while uh until we started to get some sales and then it evolved to running standard shopping and smart shopping at the same time um we've then moved to running just smart shopping right off the bat um just because smart shopping will still take this about the same amount of time to learn but smart shopping has been able to start off on its own recently uh much better now the first 60 days are going to be rough uh they are they are the worst the campaign is going to perform because what they're starting to do is is see okay who's going to click on the ads then who's going to stay the longest versus who you know looks at more pages per session uh versus you know who bounced and then it's going to start to look at okay now who is who is getting ready to purchase and how long is it going to take for the purchase you could have a 10 15 day lag between when they first start searching before when they actually purchase and then once it sees the purchases, then it starts to scale more. I would run some other campaigns alongside of it though, rather than standard shopping. I run smart shopping, run dynamic remarketing, but run a really targeted search campaign as well. That helps a lot. That's been the best campaign that we've seen help smart shopping is because Google says, ah, this is what the keywords that they're using to, to, to get to the website to buy. Uh, and your standard or your search campaign should be your second highest spend. It should be smart shopping at X amount spend. And then the next, spend level either equally or below should be your search campaign and make sure you're using a very few but very targeted keywords um and make sure that they're purchase intent <clears throat> so things like buy order purchase um those keywords and then your product uh noun i guess i would say whatever your product is 
Um, that has been that has been the best thing that we've seen uh, uh, work for smart shopping because smart shopping will remarket to all those people that came in from the search. And if they have a high intent when they got there and dynamic marketing via smart shopping can bring them back, then, then smart shopping says, aha, these are the type of people that what they what they do, who they look like, what they search for, and then how long it takes for them to buy because smart shop won't take over from there. <clears throat> uh, I'm just getting started, uh, Michael Johnson, I'm just getting started with Google Ads again after not advertising for two and a half years for a variety of reasons. How can you use our current customer list, 123,000 customers in the campaign setup uh, you recommend to give us the best chance of profitability as early as possible. So what's interesting is if you're, if you haven't advertised in two and a half years and then Michael, could you let me know if you have um, more than $50,000 of advertising spend in Google itself? Um, and I believe that you said, you know, how can we use our current customer list? And I'm curious, I mean, that it's already in Google ads and you already applied that, or you say, I have that list and how can I apply that? Uh, just so I can make sure I'm, I'm contextualizing it. Uh, and then Boha, I'm perfect. Thanks for the insight. You're welcome. Uh, Alvian, question about Google Merchant Center policy. Can we use lifestyle image in the first product image or it needs to be a photo of the product with a white background only? Use a white background photo only. Um, it's your first product image is going to be most uh, mostly featured in the shopping campaigns, uh, well, like the standard shopping campaigns that SERP that is seen most often and Google and every test since 2014 has shown that a product image with a white background is going to be, is going to be the best. Um, I would have your second or third image be a lifestyle image. So that when you get to the page, they can see it, but that white background is actually pretty important for the Google SERP. So that's why I would use that. Uh, and then it's like uh, coasters, cushions, table mats, trivets. Okay. Yeah. I would, I would say um, run your search like buy coasters, buy cushions, make sure you contextualize the cushions, buy patio cushions, purchase patio cushions, uh, those type of things. Make sure that you give in that search intent and then run that search network uh, search campaign on target CPA uh, with very, very few keywords. The more keywords you have, the bigger the budget you need. So with a broad keyword and then target CPA using very few keywords will turn into thousands of different searches. Um, so just make sure you don't start off with like, you know, 15 or 20 keywords and only give the campaign like a thousand bucks a month. They will, they will test enough. Um, yeah, and then, oh, uh, 50,000 over the whole lifetime of our Google ads account. Yeah. So Google won't allow you to upload a customer list into Google without having at least spent $50,000 in the lifetime first. Um, it used to not be like that. I think it was only like two years ago too, that you could upload your whole customer list. Uh, so you might've uploaded it two and a half years ago and you are fine now. Um, but the new, the new system, the new restriction is you need to have at least $50,000 in lifetime spend so that people can just open up a brand new Google ads account, dump a customer list and then spam it to everyone and then, and then leave. Uh, so they need to make sure that you're, you're a real advertiser. Um, getting this error under audience sources, e-com product e issue. Yeah. So Mark, um, can you, Mark, can you drop your, your website? Is it okay? It's going to be live. It's going to be public to everyone if you want to drop your website, but I can check real quick for you to see um, what the issue may be. Uh, but what is basically happening is the dynamic remarketing code is not firing properly on the site. So it's shooting back either an empty or an invalid uh, e-com product ID, which e-com product ID is e-commerce product identifier, the ID. And what that means is that when someone comes to the website and looks at a product, it's not sending that product back to Google. So it's not dynamically remarketing back to them. So Mark, if you're okay uh, with posting up your, your website, I'll take a look at it right now and then and tell you, um, you know, what you would need to fix. Most of the time, um, uh, yes, we spent 400,000 since 2008. Okay, perfect. Um, if it's for, for shopping, uh, let's see, um, uh, spending the best chance of profitability as early as possible. So upload that customer list. And then what I would do is I would run a smart shopping campaign, uh, right off the bat first. That is uh, the mark. Oh, let's see here. Posted above. Uh, I'll, I'll get that here, Mark. So <clears throat> um, let's see. It says message retracted. I'm not sure if it's. Might not be able to post the link here, actually. That might be. Might be why. Okay, I'll get that here in a second. Um, so, Michael, what uh, what Google's going to need is is previous conversion history. So, by uploading that customer list uh, and running smart shopping, it'll give you the best chance for it to to identify 
it's it's going to start to remark to those people though too. That's that's going to be the thing. Um, is if you have a customer list and you're going to give smart shopping a chance, it's going to start showing ads to anybody in that customer list that it thinks it's still in the market for a product. And then it'll actually give you, here's the new and here's the repeat customers inside of smart shopping. But by uploading that customer list and saying, here's what they look like, it does give it a chance to identify all of the common denominators that those users have so that it can help find new users to, to, to market to. Um, I would say that with a customer list, it's, Unless you say, hey, I think that a lot of these people are still going to be purchasing, you know, from me in the future. It just depends on the frequency of those purchases because you could run a display campaign, you can run a YouTube campaign to that customer list. But if there's no purchase intent there, if they're not ready to buy anything, you're going to waste a lot of money um, marketing those audience. And then you're going to tell Google, hey, these people are just not not ready to buy anything. Uh, so smart shopping may start to veer away from that audience. So I would only run smart shopping first with that list to your entire product category. And then it's going to start to remarket, learn, see those purchases, and then go find new users. Uh, upload the customer list as an observation or target. Um, it depends on if you're well with with smart shopping particularly. You can't you can't upload a list um, and market. You could when you upload a customer list into um, the audience manager, smart shopping will use it no matter what. Uh, but it's not going to be set on a target. It's going to be set on observation, but it will target them. Um, now, in other campaigns, if you're going to be mar if you're using a you know an outbound campaign, you would have to target them uh, because that's where that's what your audience is going to be. But if you're running an inbound search campaign, upload that list and set it to observe. If you're going to be running an inbound campaign like search, um, because otherwise you're just going to say, hey, people are searching for these keywords. And only if they're target, and only if they're this user, that's what target means. But observation means, hey, if anybody is still actually searching for the keywords that I have, I would set that uh, that audience to an obser observation, and maybe put a positive bid adjustment of maybe twenty percent, maybe thirty percent, because they're your previous customer. So act like an RLSA, right? like a remarketing list for search ad. And then if they are still searching, you can actually see how that audience is performing without only targeting them. Uh, and then. It says, uh, let me just see here. Mark, it says post above. Um, I don't see it. I'm sorry. It just says getting this error under audience sources. Uh, I don't see any other messaging for you. If you could, can you try to post your website in here again? And maybe, and maybe just do like, just put the URL without the .com and I'll just add the .com here. Um, maybe it might see a link and just say, hey, you're not allowed to post links inside of the uh, chat. And I think that's what YouTube does. So just give me your URL without the www, without the .com, I'll add that for you. <laughs> I'll take a look. Um, but my, uh, but Michael, the, um, it, it depends on the industry. It's hard for me to say like, what's the average LTV? How many more, how many purchases do they make? What is going to be, um, you know, the profit margin on that? Uh, those are all things that, that I would say is, is kind of a little bit more of a custom strategy to upload a list. Do you need to re-engage them? Are you wanting to re-engage them? Do you think they'll purchase again? Um, all of those things that I don't really know if it's a good idea. I mean, if it's a if it's a list that's you know three years old and they're just not gonna buy anything anymore, don't even upload it. Uh, it might not even be useful for you. Um, if it's useful for Google to know who they are because they can find other people like that, then I would absolutely upload it. Um, and I would only upload it to Smart Shopping to test it because that's gonna have the most amount of smart algorithm. Uh, Mark, thank you so much. Let me go take a look here real quick. Uh, da, 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 da. All right, we are taking a look at the website here. Uh, Linux Tag Manager. Look here. All right. All right, so I don't see a product page on the website. So um, how do I get to all the products here? Because when I go to the wall out, I have to wall art, I have to choose my character and then I do my ah there we are. There we are, there we are. Okay now I found it. So the elk smoking cigar wall art. Perfect. Let me take a look here. Uh, Google tag manager data layer. All right, I see the Ecom prod ID is firing here. It's firing through Tag Manager. Let's see here. <laughs> yeah, 
uh, Ecom Friday shot by two two one one two six three five. Um, Ecom total value null. Ecom page type product. Uh, Ecom product D. So, um, Mark, I see the Ecom product is firing in the data layer. Fine. Um, I'm looking at the elk smoke cigar wall art green suit. But what is possibly happening is I don't know this. I'd have to I'd have to hop into the account and take a look though. Um, and just take a look at the remarketing tag. And I see it firing fine here. Let me just look here. So Uh, I'm not exactly sure, Mark, for broad reason. I'm seeing Ecom Prod ID fire through the Glass remarketing tag, um, like perfectly. It's uh, it's firing fine. I'm not exactly sure. This would, uh, my opinion is if you're working with a website developer, see if there's something an issue with the theme or the way that the code is firing, but Ecom Prod is showing up perfectly. I am too, and I've been stumped for quite some Yeah, that's what's odd is it's, it's, um, let's do this. Uh, let me give you a number. So with Google, Google um, has what they call a uh, tag implementation team. So Google actually has a free team called Google's tag implementation team. Let me just see if I can find the uh, Google tag implementation team. Uh, let me just see here. See if I can find the uh, number here for you. I will have to. And then Mark, uh, you are all hats. Uh, <laughs> Mark, I'm going to drop my email here. Um, shoot me an email. I'm going to get a, I can't, I don't have the, the link pulled up. I'm going to send you the contact information for Google Tag Implementation Team. It takes usually about three days for them to get back to you. But what you, what you can do is you can actually schedule a call with them and they will hop in. Um, you need to give them out, uh, your basically access to everything and they'll email you and say, here's what we're going to need before the call, give them access to everything. And then you hop on, they actually kind of just take over and they say, aha, here's it. Okay. I see this. I see that. Um, here's what you need to do, or here's what I can do for you. And nine times out of 10, they can actually fix it with you on the call. Um, these are, it, it's hard for me to identify just because it could be possibly theme based. Um, and you might have to actually use like the newer version or the older version of the remarketing tag or customize that tag uh, before implementation. And so Google Tag Manager can look at your theme and say, here's what it's sending, here's where it is good, here's where it's bad. And this is what we need to change in order to get that to fire. Um, so these are, and we, no joke, we contact tag implementation team probably like, well, I don't, but my team does uh, two to three times a week. It's not an uncommon issue, but that's why they exist. Uh, so the tag implementation team has an email or it might be something right through Merchant Center, um, but I'll go to the team and just say, "Hey, what's the what's the contact? Or do we have someone there that we're working with right now?" Um, and then we can, whenever we have tag issues that we're like, "Yeah, everything looks fine," we just kick it right over to the tag implementation team, and they can get it usually fixed within you know, a small amount of time. So just shoot me an email, um, and then I'll fire up an email back to you. I uh, hope it's not too broad of a question. Any tips for optimizing accounts with small impressions, click data due to small location targeting, low keyword search volume? Think small brick and mortar. So, John, I would actually, um, if you, one well, first thing is make sure that you do have a Google Merch, uh, Google My Business, and make sure your Google My Business is attached as a location extension. But for a small brick and mortar, 
uh, running uh, the Google local campaigns, I've seen an immense amount of value coming out of the uh, local campaigns. I have a video on our YouTube channel here that, that shows how to how to run a, uh, or not really, it's not really like how to run, it's talking about the local campaigns. We have a few brick and mortar locations. Um, the cool thing about the local campaigns is Google is finally actually giving you data about who actually shows up to your brick and mortar store, and then it optimizes off of that. So Google's gonna have something called store visits. It's probably not in your account just yet because you need to have enough visit history for that to run. And what happens is it's so stupid. I'm sorry to the kind of share with you like the long way that this is going to work, but make sure you have Google My Business. Make sure it's attached to your Google Ads account. You can do that through location extensions. Run a Google local campaign. You're not going to have a lot of control over it. You're not really going to have any control over the bids. The, there's no keywords. You can't uh, you can't tell it what days and times you want the ads to run. It kind of runs autonomously. But what it's going to do is see if it can run a campaign that drives users to your physical location. When it sees people start to show up, you'll have a new conversion action called store visits. That store visits, you'll need to then place that store visits into a yes, include in conversions in your conversion action area. And then you can actually see when this campaign runs, how much it costs me to have a person show up to my physical location. And it will it will adjust the size that it believes that it needs in order to send the most amount of traffic. So think a few months worth of optimization, but that's gonna be the best thing that I've seen. You can run a keyword strategy, you can, you can try DSA if you wanted to. So run a DSA a dynamic search ad to a small location, um, just because it's gonna help you show up for anything possible that's on your website. Set negative dynamic ad targets to your blog, uh, set positive dynamic ad targets to anything that you wanna push. Maybe just your entire website to start. Um, but DSA would be my my second choice to a local campaign. Local campaigns, especially when they can show you who showed up at your store, um, can be immensely valuable to you. And they don't they don't need a lot of aspect to run efficiently. Uh, it's like uh, when I'm sorry, I'm just gonna call the username. I hope, I hope that's okay. Uh, when starting smart shopping campaign, should I run all products in a group or divide by product category? So I actually subdivide every product into its own product group because you can then turn on and off specific ones um, based on the, the performance. So there's a step between starting your campaign and target ROAS that I think a lot of people skip. And what that is, is when you take, when you go into like the all products in your product group and you hit that pencil icon and hit subdivide, subdivide every single uh, product individually. And then when you run your campaigns without a target ROAS to start, if you're starting, don't run a target ROAS for at least 60 days or 90 days or a year if you can afford it, because the longer that it gives more data, the better it's going to be at scale. But before instilling a target ROAS, you're going to find that a couple of products are really popular, but they don't sell very well. So you might have like your first five products that have the most amount of clicks. Four of them are selling really well, and one is like an $800 CPA possibly, uh, and you're just going to need to pause that one. So you can't pause that one, though, unless you break it out. So break out every single product group individually by product. And then when you see the product start to perform worse, just shut those off. Don't and don't use a target row as to shut them off because you'll end up shutting that off and then everything else that hasn't had a sale yet. So break them out individually and then you can pause them due to non-performance. Uh, is time decay still your attribution model of choice? Any particular reason you choose that over position based? Well, position based is not always available. Um, position based usually is going to start when you have a good amount of information where it sees those multi-campaign tests. I always um, I'm sorry, I'm thinking data-driven, my apologies. Um, data-driven is what I would say is the best uh, when you can, when you have that available. Usually it's at $20,000 per month and more. Um, but Michael, it depends on your campaign. So um, let me just see here, uh, for running smart shopping, any campaign or any account that runs a smart shopping, I actually like first, I actually like first click um, because I'm gonna use a target return ad spend later on. And so if I'm running a smart shopping campaign, first click gives the ability for that campaign to hunt for people, bring them to the website. And then even if they come back through maybe a brand campaign or a search campaign or a competitive campaign, the smart shopping campaign needs to have all of the conversion value. I don't want to split the dollar amount that I'm giving to a smart shopping campaign, then tell it to hit a target return on Aspen because I'm stealing away conversion value from it, but then asking it to meet a conversion value goal. As an example, if someone is uh, first click on the smart shopping campaign, and then let's say they come through the brand campaign, 
time decay, if it was like two weeks, brand, the time decay is going to take 90% or 80% of the conversion value, give it to brand and give 10% or 20% to smart shopping. And I'm going to say, hey, smart shopping, hit a 300% return on ad spend goal. And it's going to say, well, I could have, but you possibly took all of the conversion value out and gave it to another campaign and only gave me small. So I'm going to crash and burn. <laughs> I'm just going to start to die off. So with smart shopping campaign, I like first click because I want to give all the conversion value to the campaign that brought me that user in the first place. Even if they come back and convert through my brand campaign or dynamic marketing, that's fine. But if I need it to hit a specific goal, like if you're using a target ROAS bidding strategy, use first click. If you're using a target CPA strategy, you know, time decay is fine. But um, make sure that your campaigns that are sharing those users, look at look at your top conversion pack, uh, whatever campaign are sharing those users the most often, maybe use um, linear because then you're going to equally give it the ability, but then you can set realistic target CPA goals specifically. So it depends on how much campaign inter interchangeability you have, how many people are going through your campaigns. And then it also depends on what goals you have set uh, and what your bidding strategy is. All those three things are factors that you really need to know to say, if I choose the wrong bid, uh, attribution model, am I limiting my performance in a campaign that could have been bringing me a lot of good users? So it's just something to think about. It's not really a blanket answer. Um, you need to look at how those campaigns interact with each other and what you're asking those campaigns to do before possibly saying, I'm not going to attribute enough to those specific campaigns. Uh, I've got to ask you, uh, oh, uh, Alvin, uh, or Alvin, sorry. Um, for running smart shopping campaign for 45 days learning period, what's the minimum daily budget for the campaign? I usually like to spend at least, least 30. Um, and that's not a, for a 45 day period for a 45 day period. You're going to want to run like 80 for a 45 day period or a hundred dollars a day. Um, we tell our clients we need $2,000 per month minimum and 90 days because I had campaigns be immensely popular right off the bat. I've had campaigns where by month three, I could finally start to scale. Um, our general rule of thumb is we don't take on clients without at least $2,000 per month and at least 90 days, because that's going to be the time that you're going to need to say, did I give it everything I had? Uh, and did I give it the best chance? Is it completely viable? Um, if you're going to say, if I run it for 45 days and then I'm going to stop it after that, think long-term. Google is is a year over year performance, especially with smart shopping. It's not days, weeks, or it's, it gets better month to month, but your six months compared to the first six months are going to be immensely better. So spend whatever you possibly can afford to spend for the longest you can afford to spend it because you're going to be investing into this campaign. So the smart shopping campaign is not a, you know, I just turn it on and make millions of dollars. Like all of our campaigns that we, or not all of them, but every campaign that we have, that we, we have probably 60 smart shopping accounts. Uh, each one of them started at that $2,000 minimum for 90 days. So $2,000 per month for 90 days. That would be my recommendation because that's what we set our agency for. Um, you could do it with less, but you're gonna have to give it longer time. Um, uh, uh, John says, I gotta ask you, I know you've had some experience with optometrists and that, uh, and that, and a foot doctor, actually the business I'm referring to, uh, would you do local versus search for those as well? So for the optometrist and foot doctor, we do specifically e-commerce sales nationwide. Um, it's not uh, the optometrist that we actually have experience with isn't necessarily an optometrist. It's an ophthalmic instrument company. So they sell products. And so we run smart shopping for both of those with good success. Um, but if you're looking at optometrists, a local campaign, absolutely, absolutely. Um, a service-based local campaign would be fantastic. I would say that that is where I would start immediately. If I ever have a brick and mortar location that says, hey, I need to drive traffic to my, oh, we have a couple uh, emergency clinics for animals. We also have a couple of um, urgent care clinics that we marked for local campaigns, 100%. I would say definitely, definitely start there uh, because it hits good map placement. It gets good Google My Business placement for very localized products or very localized searches. I'm sorry. Um, so definitely for a brick and mortar location for service based, absolutely try local campaigns. It's, it, it could be really, really well. The one that works the best for us that we saw, the first one that we tried with local campaigns was actually a tire center. So like tire rotations, new tires, think discount tires, just not them. Um, it's it's a mom and pop shop in Tucson, but local campaigns been immensely valuable for them. Uh, Nishua, hi John, I wanted to ask a question. I have a smart shopping campaign. Uh, it was running for four months with $800 budget per day. The last two weeks, the spent dropped more than half, and I'm not sure why. So uh, I hope I pronounced your name correctly, Nashua, so I apologize if I'm not. Check to see if a product that was really immensely popular went out of stock. 
or got disapproved. That's usually the number one thing that we see is that a product that was selling well all of a sudden went out of stock, but that was attributing to like 40% of your sales. That happens very, very, very frequently. So I don't know if that's the issue, but that's the first thing that I would check first. But also make sure that there's no uh, product disapprovals. So any product that was selling well that either went out of stock or got disapproved or possibly you know has a suspension because of the um, because of a policy or whatever maybe check that first. Make sure you're checking your codes on your website, making sure that Google Tag Manager, Analytics, you know your um, your G Tag, nothing fell off because that can have an issue. Check your audience manager and make sure it's not a tag issue like Econ Product ID not firing. Um, it's going to take some hunting, uh, but the first thing I would look at is usually when it's running smoothly and just just drops an app is one or two products that were selling really, really well, possibly went out of stock and that was delivering you half your traffic. So take a look at that first. Uh, Rainbow, hi John. Uh, how do you know when to pause a keyword? Uh, the obvious is when it's spending and not converting, but how many days do you wait? How many clicks versus impressions? We usually use a base 100 system. So what a base 100 system is, after 100 impressions, you should have a click. After 100 clicks, you should have a sale. If you don't have 100 clicks to a sale and you have other keywords that have less than 100 clicks and they have a sale, that's when you pause it. Um, attribution model is set at the account level, correct? You can only have one attribution model that applies to all campaigns. Yes, yeah, so account uh, the attribution model is set at the conversion level and that applies to your campaigns. Now, the bidding strategy though is gonna be applied at a campaign level. If you have a target CPA versus maximized conversion for manual CPC and you're using time decay, well, now you're mixing your smart bidding with your manual and it might be robbing your target CPA um, from a from a campaign. 0.5 of a conversion actually is double CPA. So if you take one conversion, you split it in half and you have a target CPA of 100 and it was an $80 cost per conversion, that $80 cost per conversion split in half becomes 160 and now you're not meeting your target CPA. So look about the bidding strategies that you have and the attribution model and see how those two could possibly fight. Uh, should we start with smart shopping first? We have a tight budget or a search campaign. Uh, I know you recommend running both, but if your budget is less than a 1K, just run smart shopping for a long time if you have less than 1K. Um, this is gonna, and I hope this is gonna sound discouraging, but $2,000 per month on a smart shopping campaign gives me 90 days. One less than 1K, or if you're running 1K, six months. Um, if less than 1K, possibly a year. It is, it needs a lot of traffic and it needs to learn and it needs to learn a lot of traffic with a lot of products. So the more budget you give it, the faster it's gonna go. But if you have less than a thousand, I would do just smart shopping and run that without a ROAS goal for as long as you possibly can. Um, and that's gonna sound stupid, but then just hope that you can start to see some success sooner rather than later. Um, not to sound pretentious or anything, we just, we wouldn't take you on as a client just because I would need, for for us to have a good working relationship, I couldn't have you call me like three months and be like, hey, John, what's going on? And be like, I'm sorry, give me more time. You wouldn't pay me to tell you that. Um, so that's kind of why we give it that reason. You have to give it, you know, many, many months at a less than a thousand dollars per month. Unfortunately, Google's just kind of an expensive network. Uh, Benjamin, hi, John. Greetings from Germany. Hey, Benjamin. <laughs> I wish I knew German, uh, but uh, greetings. <laughs> uh, John, I got these and, uh, and are gold. Perfect. Awesome, John. Uh, Mark, is there a way to verify that things are operating correctly when starting and running a smart shopping campaign? Are there types of logs or anything that I could dive into to properly? The best thing to look at is um, Mark. Actually, that audience manager, um, that 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 tag that he had that issue with, that's going to be the only thing that we really look at. The next, the only thing that we really really use as an indicator is, you know, it doesn't say misconfigured. You have a remarketing audience that's firing inside your audience manager via the tag. The other thing is, you're going to look at a lot of impressions. You should have tens of thousands of impressions per week with a moderate budget. If you don't have tens of thousands of impressions, sometimes it says that remarketing is not working and that's an indicator. Sometimes it's an indicator of, of low traffic, but usually an indicator that remarketing is not working. Uh, unfortunately, it's not the problem. Everything is fine with the products. I was wondering if I should lower my target ROAS to bring up the spend back or I'm scared to ruin the optimization. So if everything looks fine and for some reason products the last two weeks just died off, my opinion, if you can afford it, drop your spend a bit, give it more time. If it doesn't come back, then turn on target ROAS. You can turn on target ROAS or bring up your target ROAS higher right now, um, but I would drop the spend just a little bit. I've had I've had more often than not, just happened three weeks ago, I was getting like a $250 CPA in, in a smart shopping campaign, which sounds really high, but these are $80,000 products. And all of a sudden it went from 250 for two weeks, it went up to like 1100 and then 
I didn't touch it because I was like, sometimes there's a blip and whoop, it just came right back and it hasn't happened since. So it could be a blip. Might not be anything incorrect, but you do have sometimes these weird ebb and flows. Think seasonality too. It may be coming into the summer months. Whatever you're selling is not going to work well in the summer months. If that's summer where you are, maybe drop your ad spend. But it is it is a good thing just to reduce ad spend and hang tight and see if it comes back. If it reduces ad, if you do reduce ad spend for a week and it doesn't come back, I'll be here next Monday. Let's let's talk about that and see if, so what else we could do. Uh, hi, John. Do you recommend dividing smart shopping campaigns? And no. Um, so, Davey, I would not divide a smart shopping campaign into uh, different campaigns unless you can prove, uh, we did this with 3 Shopify, that the product that is being clicked on and having sales attributed to that ad is actually the product selling. If it is, then you can divide them. And the way you find out is going into analytics, going into e-commerce, going into product performance, adding a secondary dimension of campaign ID and make sure that the campaign ID inside of Google ads, it says, yeah, we took this product, had 100 clicks, sold 10. You should see 10 attributed to that campaign ID. If you don't, that means that they're clicking on the ad, buying something else, and then just giving the value back to that product. An easy way to identify if that's happening is look at your, your product list in Smart Shopping, take the sale, multiply that by uh, whatever multiple is of the sale of the product price and see if that's your conversion value. If you see a $10 item has two sales and it doesn't equal 20, equals you know, 80 or 10, then that's not the product that was actually selling. If you divide that, what ends up happening is they click on an ad, they go and they look at that product, then they look at something else and they buy something else. If that product that they look at that was something else is in a different campaign, those two will not speak to each other. Both campaigns start to have bad performance. So that's why I usually recommend not splitting them up. Um, I'm going to try to go fast here as we have five minutes left. I have uh, added cart, begin checkout, purchase conversion tracking, anything else I'd be tracking for e-commerce. Should I include all, including conversion or only? No, so only do the purchase conversion, Sam. Uh, only the purchase conversion. Otherwise, Google's going to say, hey, a lot of people that add to cart and abandon, those are good. Let's go find more of those. So only the purchase conversion. What conversion window time frame do you recommend? As high as you can get it. 30 on view through, 90 on click through. I always recommend high. I don't. For me, I there's no reason to say, oh, well, if they buy on day 31, I don't want to know. <laughs> Make it as long as you can. Um, it's going to it's gonna help all of your smart shopping, or sorry, it's going to help all of your smart bidding strategies identify that this is the time that they buy. I've never understood why people do one-day view-through conversions. It doesn't make any sense to me. I want to know everything that's going on in my, in my Google Ads campaign. Uh, oh, what kid you love more and why? I love Avon. Uh, Yvonne is the best person in the world, um, and I love him very, very much. Uh, and actually, that's Yvonne uh, here asking that question. That's, <laughs> that's our employee. But I love uh, Yvonne. Yvonne's my favorite. Uh, hi, John. Any tips for Google Ads app campaigns? I'm hoping to launch one this week. Thanks. Yeah. So um, I, I wouldn't actually say that it's really much of a tip, um, but I would start with app campaigns completely automated start with a very low target CPA um, to cost per install, I would say $2, $3. Think about like really, really, really low. Don't, it's so weird. Normally you start with a higher CPA and then work your way down. With app installs, start low and work your way up. That's the best tip I can give you. With the CPA goal, start very, very low, $2 cost per install. Start there, then work your way up to see where your volumes are gonna increase. Uh... Do you have any experience with Amazon ads? If you sell products at Amazon and have a low monthly budget, could these be better than smart shopping on Google or how about standard shopping? Well, John, I actually sell products on Amazon. Sold $15,000 worth of products and got to keep five. I'm never going back to Amazon. <laughs> Amazon took 66% of my profits. I'm much more profitable on Google. So I don't have a ton of experience except for getting burned recently. Um, but I do have a great, great, great pay uh, as you go kind of per sale um, introduction, I can make you to. The gentleman is a super ninja, um, sold his business for $5 million, built it selling Amazon products. So um, great person that I could recommend to you, but I just, I can't afford the fees. Um, Amazon, we were doing prime FBA and it just took two thirds of my profit right off the top. And I just, I can't, I can't afford it. So um, with the products that we were selling, so unfortunately, I don't have a ton of experience, but I do have a person that can shepherd you through the product and you only pay that person if a product sells. And I think he takes a small percentage right at the top. So that's that's my opinion. Um, Benjamin, uh, I said a high T CPA. Then I use uh, then I use before. OK, so you said a high target cost per per acquisition than I used before. But my campaign is getting less conversions like before. It isn't 
using the whole daily budget. How long does it take? So, uh, Benjamin, I would actually run as long as possible without the target CPA. Usually what happens is when you start with a higher target CPA, it says, well, these two out of 100 SKUs, only these two sold at that level, so only market those two, and it doesn't meet the daily budget. So running without a target CPA goal for as long as you possibly can, think months, um, and adjust your daily budget so that you're not throwing all this money out the window. Don't spend $1,000 a day without a target CPA goal, because after 90 days, you're going to waste $90,000 and maybe you only made 40. So set it with a with a healthy ad spend that you can afford without a target CPA goal um, and run that for as long as possible. And after a few months, I, we usually recommend at least 60 days. Then you can start with the low target return ad spend goal. Think 200% and move it to 250, then 300. Um, because right now, as soon as you as soon as you add in a target return ad spend goal, it just says don't sell anything at all unless it's met that goal. And only products that have met that goal in the last about 30 days will get actual activity. Um, I have, thou uh, I have thousands of products, but they're very similar. Uh, would it be wise to dump entire small budget into one product and slowly open up to others when it finds success? My opinion is I start with all products in one campaign. If you have thousands of products, we have, we have that optometrist company has 8,000 SKUs. They're all in one smart shopping campaign to begin with. The only reason why we broke it out is because the bigger, 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 like think about 80, 70, 80, 90,000 dollar products weren't getting any activity because the smaller products were selling so quickly and using up all the daily budget. Um, my opinion, dump all products into one smart shopping campaign because those will start to show interactivity. Like they click on this ad, they bought that product. So, or they click on this ad, then they view that product, start remarking that product to them. All products into one campaign is my opinion. That's how I always start. That's our default. Um, thank you for today's insight, Albie. No worries. Yvonne, no cheating. Ha, 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 ha. Uh, Michael Johnson, uh, who do you recommend for Facebook ads? Spotlight Social. Spotlight Social, those people are the best. They used to actually run the Facebook ads for Microsoft themselves, and they fired them as a client because Microsoft wasn't getting its its act together. So that's Spotlight Social, absolutely the best for Facebook, Instagram. Those are the people, like what I am to Google ads, those are what those people are to Facebook ads. Spotlight Social, best, best, best. Uh, ask for Jason, he's the owner. Tell him solutions they sent you. Um, and then you'll end up just paying double. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> they're, they're, they're great people. Uh, so spotlight social for sure. Um, Sam for ecom, uh, what conversions would you suggest tracking other than add a cart? Uh, actually the only thing that I track is just purchase. I really don't care about anything else. The, the lead indicator that I look at though is pages per session, time on site bounce rate, um, pages per session. Do you want to see that over two, um, bounce rate? You want to be like 60% or under. And then uh, time on site, hopefully over 30 seconds. Those are lead indicators that I look at for my, my smart shopping campaigns. I really don't care who adds to cart. Um, honestly, it doesn't, I, I, I don't even look at that very often. Um, I, I will look at it sometimes if it's just like, man, there's just no sales happening. Are people at least adding to cart? I'll look at that. But other than that, I don't count anything else as a conversion, but a purchase. That's the only thing I count. Uh, I'm doing Amazon ads for four years. So let me know if you have any questions. Yeah, Bohan, is, that would be, That'd be great. Bohan is, uh, I would say that that's, that's someone that I would recommend. Uh, Bohan has been here for, for a long time and I, I trust that person. So, um, that maybe you guys can link up. That would be a good idea. Uh, Dave Green, what do you think about frequent budget changing and smart shopping every four days by approximately 10 to 20%? Uh, if you're talking about increasing, yes. If you're talking about decreasing, absolutely not. Um, so I would increase your daily ad spend, uh, every four days by approximately 10 to 20%. That's fine. Um, after a month, you're going to 100% increase your ad spend. Um, so if you can afford it, uh, what I don't, what what scaling is fine. Backtracking back down is horrible. When you start to add budget, it's going to learn more users, it's going to learn faster, it's going to spend more money, and possibly not make any more sales initially. But if you say, hey, I've added you know 80% of my my budget over this last month, and you know after a week or two, it's not selling, I got to back it back down. All you did was just ask Google to start to learn and then take that away. So increasing, totally fine. Decreasing, bad. We usually never, never, ever decrease a smart shopping campaign unless we had that uh, that that discussion we had where it's going good and all of a sudden sales drop and they're not coming back. We'll back it back down in the meantime and just kind of figure out what's going on, but then go right back to it. But as is, especially in the beginning, never take away ad spend because it's saying, hey, go find new traffic if they start to remarket to the existing traffic. If you cut the budget in half, it says, okay, you know, all those people that get ready to buy, ignore them. And all those people that are coming in only take half. It, it's it's very detrimental to campaigns. Uh, Mark, thanks, John. You're awesome. Can I buy you a beer? <laughs> I actually don't drink that much. Uh, but yeah, I appreciate it, Mark. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, but uh, especially for that that uh, product, all of those products into one campaign 
absolutely. I burned myself many times trying to outsmart Google and separate those smart shopping. And they're like, oh, they came in with this product, but they bought that product. I'll give you a really quick example. Two products in two different campaigns. If a person comes, clicks on this product and then ends up on the site viewing this product, Google will start to remarket the first product that they're no longer interested back to that person. It doesn't jump campaigns and then start to remarket the product they're interested in. Don't know why it does, that happens, but you can imagine a few thousand times that happening per day, all of a sudden both campaigns just start to not sell that well. So I've had campaigns that were really good. I split them up, both dropped. I brought it back together, it came right back up. <laughs> it's the weirdest thing. Um, have you ever used conversion tracking software like Sedmetrics or high risk? No, absolutely not. Um, the only reason why is there's 70 million signals that your Google is using to understand what where those conversions are gonna come. And I've never seen a third party software that was able to A, help, or B, tell me a better story than Google's top conversion path or even Google's own conversion. I do have a company that I'm working with called uh, Northbeam that we're building a third party cookie to observe the conversions, but it is only so that your omni-channel marketing, you don't have too selfish of conversions coming from one channel. So what that means is that your Google ads can't say, I sold a product, then Facebook say, I sold a product, but you actually only sold one. This tells exactly what happened. But um, I've, I've never had a third party software tell me or help me understand better what Google didn't already tell me. Uh, I just, it told me this happened, but what else was happening? Um, I guess if you need omni-channel and you're spending you know, X amount of money on Facebook, X amount of money on Google, and you have your conversion tracking set up to a pop, proper view and click attribution, you're not just going to Google, Facebook's default. Facebook's default is like, oh yeah, they pass by the ad and then they, then they end up buying because they bought it somewhere else and didn't have to click on it. So there's a whole topic for another story to have time for, but uh, I don't like third party. Um, if I don't like also as an agency having hundreds of clients, I don't like to rely on a third party software where if that goes down, my my clients have a bad time. Um, I usually like to only use Google products if that helps. Uh, thank you, man. You were awesome. I just changed the pick and name from BizHike Digital. Hey, Sam. <laughs> if you notice, it's not easy for you. Thanks so much for the gold nuggets. You're welcome, Sam. <laughs> uh, what is recommended budget increase when smart shopping is relatively stable? If it's relatively stable, just keep scaling. Uh, I've gone from a $300 per day spend to $1,000 per day spend in one month. But the conversions were there. Each time I increased it, my ROAS didn't dip at all. I'm like, all right, increase it again. I've, I've increased a uh, campaign double uh, four times in one month. Doubled it one week, doubled it next week, doubled it next week, doubled it next week, up to $1,000 per month. Uh, or sorry, $1,000 per day. But the conversions were there. What's going to happen is if you increase it, your ROAS may dip. Your sales may not increase it, increase, wait there for like the next month or two. That's the problem is people will increase it. The ROAS gets cut in half. They wait a week and they panic and then they back it back down. That all you do is just waste money. So if you increase it and the sales aren't there, give it 60 days. If the sales are there, increase it again. Uh, see hot, uh, I'm hoping to pronounce your naming right. How would you go about and launch your app campaign if you're limited budget to start? Also, what are your best optimizations to support? Lean on Google, um, use target CPA, leave it very, very broad. Um, that's the thing that you, that I haven't launched a lot of app campaigns, but the ones, the people that I know that do a lot of app campaigns, they have a very low CPA goal, $2 per cost per install. And they do very little specific targeting. Let Google do the heavy lifting for you. That's the best thing I can tell you. Other than that, um, it, it's weird because it was an, it was a workout app that we launched recently for a client. We actually kind of helped them do it. And it just went gangbusters because we are in a small city of San Francisco. So uh, it just, it worked really, really, really well. But that's, I don't do a lot of app installs. We don't have a lot of app clients, but I would say that um, the app installs lean on Google to do the heavy lifting. So give it a really good wish list. Like you find all the targeting for us, but I just need less than $2 cost per install and start there. That's the best thing I could really give you just cause I have limited experience in that. Uh, but John says, thanks, John. Yeah, you're very welcome. Um, unfortunately, we have, to, we have to kind of cut this in now because I have a call here starting in six minutes uh, and I need to get prepared for it. But I appreciate it, everyone. Thank you so much. And uh, we're going to be doing this every Monday at 930 Pacific. So everybody that I've talked to and give um, instructions to, let's come back this next Monday and meet again. And then we'll see um, We'll see what we can, we can kind of pull together. And let's just see here. Um, and Mark. Got your email. I'll respond uh, before end of the day today. Thanks, everyone. I really appreciate it.